According to the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, the lakes are home to 177 species of fish, and more than a third of those species are considered threatened or endangered. But strides are being made in the study of at least one such fish. Great Lakes Now website contributor and producer Kathy Johnson and her husband, diver and videographer Greg Lashbrook, bring us the story from the St. Clair River, which flows from Lake Huron to Lake St. Clair between Michigan and Ontario. Brad Utrup and Jan Michael Hessenauer are researchers with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Fisheries Division, and they're studying a very special fish. Northern mat toms are a small catfish that most people and anglers will go their whole life and never even know that they're out there. They're incredibly rare across Michigan and the Great Lakes region. Adult mad toms are small, only reaching four to five inches in length but they are one of the few aquatic species in the Great Lakes that is venomous. If you got stuck by one of their spines, you'd get a, a, a decent sting. It'd probably feel like a, a bee or a wasp that had stung you pretty good. We try to be real careful handling them so that that doesn't happen to us. The fish aren't common in the Great Lakes, but Brad and Jan ran across them while studying other species. We typically don't look specifically for northern mathons, so um, we catch them as part of our lake sturgeon survey in the North Channel of the St. Clair River. In their sturgeon research, Jan and Brad were using set lines, long, heavy fishing lines with several hooks. And they decided to go after mad toms with the same lines. And on the end of those set lines, we put one of those minnow traps, little trap about this, this big with a funnel on each end. Um, and that was to catch northern mad toms because we knew they were present in the system. And for the longest time, we had really poor luck, and we assumed that they were really, really rare. They were only catching about a dozen mad toms a year, enough to know the fish were there, but too few for a real scientific study. Then, they switched the bait in the trap from cubed cheese to night crawlers, and everything changed. About five years ago, all of a sudden, we started catching a lot of them. So we went from catching just 12 or 15 a year to hundreds a year. Now they had enough mad toms for a real study, but Brad and Jan faced a different problem. So we can catch fish in nets and we can see that they're in certain places or they're declining or increasing, but we really don't understand what's really happening until we're under there observing this firsthand. Catching the fish could only tell them what they already knew, that the mad toms were in the St. Clair River. But Brad and Jan wanted to know a lot more. We don't know a lot about the habitat that they're using on, on the bottom. Knew they were out there, knew they were reproducing, but we really didn't know the how, the, the why, and the when. So that's why we decided we needed to, to take a little closer look at these reproductive habits. To get up close and personal with the mad toms, Brad and Jan would have to go where the fish were. They needed to learn to dive. Scuba diving for me has always been something I've been interested in and, and something that just made perfect sense for our station. We can try to, to tease out some more of those details of why these things are happening, not just reporting that here's the facts, but actually figuring out and kind of finishing and telling the story of why it's, why it's happening. Brad and Jan had lots of questions. How deep were the mad toms nesting? At what time of year? On what type of bottom? How far apart were the nests? And how many eggs were in each one? Were they being preyed upon by other species? And in order to know that the mad toms were reproducing successfully, they wanted to see a male mad tom guarding a nest. The male will stay with his eggs and protect them from, from predators and, and guard them as they develop through their life cycle. And that's a, a really important strategy that a lot of different fish species have had to increase the survival of their, their eggs that provide that high level of parental care that's really costly to the male. But before they could observe the nesting mad toms, the researchers had to find them. So they turned to the one guy that they knew could help. Long before my time here, the stations had a relationship with Greg Lashbrook, a local diver in the St. Clair River. And they did a lot of neat projects then. And so as we got into scuba diving, um, we got, got back in contact with Greg. He was incredibly generous and um, volunteered to take us out and show us some of the mad toms and um, where they hide out. When you've been out here scouting the site, how many nests have you seen approximately? Probably about a dozen, and I've marked 
most of the uh, nests that I saw with this spotted tape. Greg also knew when and where the mad toms nested. He began checking the site, and when the first cluster of eggs appeared, he marked the spot and arranged to meet Brad and Jan at the river. This used to be a lumber yard, so there's a lot of old wood pieces, and there is some wreckage, and they really like being under flat boards. When Brad and Jan went underwater, they saw mud puppy eggs. A good sign since mud puppies and mad toms use similar nesting habits. What's good for mud puppies should be pretty good for mad toms too. And when they got to the sites that Greg had scouted for them, they found what they were looking for. You come upon a board underwater, pick up one edge and look under it real carefully. You'll see the cluster of all little BB type eggs. There's a good chance it'll start to move with the current. So you gotta kinda try and protect them and don't let it leave. I mean, we were, we were blown away. I mean, there were mad toms it seemed like all over the place. By the time we did a couple dives, we felt way more confident in finding them than we did when we started. We made an incredibly efficient use of our time um, and really sped up our learning curve with trying to study these mad toms again in deep, fast flowing water and hiding, you know, not letting us find them. Northern mad tom are an endangered species in Michigan and Ontario. So their presence in the St. Clair River is an indication of a healthy system. So fish can swim, they can choose to live where they want, um, so their presence in a location means that the, their habitat needs are being met there. So it's a great sign that the mad times are here and that the invertebrates that they're finding to eat are in high numbers as well. Scuba diving is changing the researchers' perspective about how fish use the river. You know, anybody who studies fish, you know, wants to know more about them, and so when you can actually go underwater with them and spend time with them, it really, really opens your eyes to what's really going on. Definitely a new way of seeing the world and seeing, you know, the fish behaving in their normal way. Definitely gives a, a different appreciation for how they're utilizing the environment. To try to observe them directly underwater, get a sense of where they're hanging out, um, the type of habitat they're working in, and it does provide a different, you know, type of data collection for us that I think is really useful. One of the things that really surprised me about observing them in the daytime was how like docile they are. Like you could you know, really get close to them and it didn't seem to bother them. It was really amazing. Diving is also opening up new areas of study that were previously unattainable. The St. Clair River is a really tough system to work in. It's really deep, it's really fast. I think it's probably our only practical way of getting a density and ultimately a population estimate for the population in the St. Clair River. Before it's just been, you know, totally out of reach of, of what we could do. What Brad and Jan learn about the Mad Toms could help guide management and restoration plans. By observing the fish up close, they can learn how the Mad Toms are succeeding and what is needed for the population to grow. I think the, the biggest gain so far has been some of the practical experience of how to like design a larger study to look for them, how much time to expect, the type of area to cover, and just sort of how to like practically find them and observe them without upsetting their habitat too much or disrupting their their life when they're, they're doing their thing down there and, and trying to observe them without impacting them. The scuba diving will open it wide up so they can't hide from us if we can actually go down and swim with them. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.